Hi, I'm Dr. Mike, pediatrician at Nationwide Children's Hospital and host of PediaCast, a pediatric podcast for parents, and PediaCast CME for pediatricians and other medical providers. Both programs are available wherever you listen to podcasts. Today I want to talk to you about spring allergies. It is that time of year, the weather is warming up, pollen is in the air, and if you or your kids have allergies to tree and grass pollen, you know what happens. Your nose starts running and itching, you experience nasal and sinus congestion, maybe a scratchy throat, headaches and cough are common, and your eyes may feel itchy and watery. And if you have asthma, wheezing or difficulty breathing might enter the picture. And then there's the matter of sleep. Allergy symptoms can keep you from resting soundly at night, leading to tiredness the next day, difficulty concentrating, and grumpiness. Now, you may be thinking, uh, this set of symptoms sounds familiar. Cough, congestion, sore throat, maybe difficulty breathing. Could these symptoms be caused by a cold virus? And what about COVID-19? Well, there's some good news here. It's fairly easy to tell these things apart. First, fever often occurs with viral infections, but not with allergies. So if your child has a temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, and it's not going away, or there are other concerning symptoms, be sure to check in with your child's doctor. Sure, they could still have underlying allergies and a fever that's caused by an infection, but it's not the spring allergies causing the fever. On the other hand, an itchy feeling in the nose or eyes, that is common with allergies and not typical of colds, flu, or COVID. Also, the runny nose and watery eyes that occur with spring allergies, it tends to be thin and clear, whereas mucus from viral respiratory infections and bacterial sinus infections, that mucus gets thicker and darker in color. Spring allergies also tend to occur each year around the same time as tree and grass pollens appear outside. All right, so you or your kids have symptoms consistent with spring allergies. Maybe you experience these symptoms every spring, like clockwork, what do you do? Well, if it's your first time with these symptoms and they're not going away or they're getting worse, check in with your doctor and get their opinion. They'll have other questions for you, which will help establish the diagnosis and determine an individualized treatment plan. Initial treatment options for spring allergies are pretty standard and uh, consist of non-drowsy antihistamine medications, things like cetirizine, also known by the brand name Zyrtec, loratadine, known as Claritin, and fexofenadine, also Allegra. By the way, the generics of these medicines will work just fine for most people. Diphenhydramine, or Benadryl, is an older antihistamine. It has lots of side effects and is generally no longer recommended by most allergists. Now, the primary effect of antihistamine medication is to relieve the itchy sensation in the nose and eyes. And if that symptom is primarily in the eyes, or if eyes don't improve with the oral medications, there are other options in the form of eye drops. Your doctor can advise you if these are right for you. What about the runny nose and congestion? Antihistamines may help this symptom a little bit, but daily nasal steroid medication, things like fluticasone, also known as Flonase, or triamcinolone, Nasacort, and others, they do a much better job of getting rid of the mucus and drainage. However, they do take several days to start working. But once you eliminate the inflammation and drainage, the other symptoms tend to go away, like the scratchy throat and the occasional cough. And getting all of these things under control will help you get a better night's sleep so you feel good the next day. On the other hand, if the cough doesn't go away or it's accompanied by wheezing or difficulty breathing, you might have asthma, which can also be worsened by pollen and accompany spring allergies. Always talk to your doctor right away if you have wheezing or difficulty breathing any time of year, whether it's spring pollen season or not. Speaking of pollen, you want to avoid it as much as possible if you suffer from spring allergies. So pay attention to those pollen counts and limit your time outside when the counts are particularly high. If you have to go outside, or let's face it, you want to be outside to take a walk, play some sports, or otherwise enjoy the nice spring weather after a miserable winter, then consider taking a shower when you come inside to rinse off the pollen and change into a clean set of clothes. Also, keep your windows closed so the pollen stays outside and change or clean your furnace filter on a regular basis. If basic medication and pollen avoidance don't help with the symptoms of spring allergies, your doctor will likely refer you to an allergist. The allergist can do skin testing so you have a better idea of which pollens to avoid, 
and they also have more advanced treatment options up their sleeves, including fancier medications and allergy shots. At the end of the day, you do not have to live with allergy symptoms. There are many options for finding relief. However, don't make the diagnosis on your own. Check in with your doctor, get the diagnosis confirmed, and let your provider advise you on the best treatment options given you or your child's unique situation. That's all for now. If you are a mom, dad, or someone else who takes care of kids, be sure to check out PediaCast for more parenting tips and health information. And if you are a pediatrician or other medical provider looking for continuing medical education with free Category 1 credit, check out PediaCast CME. Both programs are available wherever you listen to podcasts. Until next time, this is Dr. Mike wishing you and your family a healthy day.